Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the program. You know, we keep telling you that this is definitely the zero hour when it comes to the climate, that we need to do something about climate change, that we are reaching a tipping point. We've already passed one or two, but with every year that passes, we lose an opportunity to minimize the ongoing effects of climate change. But that if we begin to act now, we can improve our planet considerably from the fate which now lies in store for us if we do nothing. New studies this week once again confirm that. Via Slate.com, we learn of a study which shows that we are likely to face mega droughts as a routine part of our lives in the decades to come. Now, a mega drought, meaning, of course, a giant drought, refers more to the length of time that a drought might last than it does to the geographic size. What we're really talking about is an increasing risk of droughts, which last for decades each, especially in the Western United States, and specifically as the result of human-induced climate change. Now, this new study predicts that we will see drought severity outside the bounds of of what we've seen over the past thousand years. That's according to tree ring records. Now, Slate quotes uh, a co-author of this study, Jason Smurden, a climate scientist, as saying, it's certainly not good news. Well, no. It's not good news. In fact, this study of mega drought tells us that uh, in coming years are likely to see droughts even worse than the epic dry periods that are thought to have caused profound changes to human settlement in the regions of the Western United States over the last thousand years. In other words, as people have been forced to pick up and move because there's no water, we're going to see even worse droughts than that in the future. As the uh, scientist says, these droughts are mega because uh, they've lasted in these regions for multiple decades. He says, we haven't seen anything like this since at least the 1400s, but by comparison, the current California drought, which is tragic, is only a relatively short four years old. Now, this is what we're doing to our planet, but imagine instead of panicking about that, the right The right wing in this country is hysterical because the president told the truth about climate change. How did he do that? President Obama had an interview with Ezra Klein in Vox, and uh, he was asked whether the media sometimes overstates the risks posed by terrorism when compared to things like global warming and epidemic disease. Now, the president responded, absolutely. As Josh Voorhees, the writer, points out, he is entirely correct. One study suggested that as many as 400,000 people per year are dying as the indirect result of climate change. Now, that's due to droughts, that's due to starvation, that's due to disease, and so on. And this report by DARA International concluded, and I quote, that inaction on climate change can be considered a leading global cause of death. Now, 400,000 deaths per year from climate change, the Global Terrorism Index, by contrast, reports that there were nearly 18,000 deaths from terrorist attacks in 2013. Now, those 18,000 deaths are tragic and horrible, of course, and we should be doing everything to end those deaths. But with our national obsession about terrorism, we are doing and saying very little, especially on the right, about the tragic deaths caused by climate change. Instead, they prefer to pretend as if climate change doesn't even exist. It's not like they're not doing anything about what's changing in our world. However, we learned from Raw Story that a legislator in Georgia, a Republican legislator, has introduced a bill which he says would ban the mixing of human and jellyfish embryos. That's right. He says he's not sure it's happening, but this legislator, Representative Tom Kirby, uh, Republican has said, I've had people tell me it is 
that is happening, but I have not verified for sure. It's time we either get in front of it or we're going to be chasing our tails, says Representative Kirby. I don't know that he means literally our cha- our tails, but uh, he is very concerned not about climate change, but about the mixing of human and jellyfish embryos. Now, there have, in fact, been scientific studies, one on Oregon Health Sciences University, where they mixed jellyfish genes with sperm taken from rhesus monkeys. This was a cellular level experiment. I don't think that anyone is really worried about the possibilities of a human jellyfish hybrid, except perhaps people who might like to write new episodes of the X-Files. However, What we have is a political discourse that's focused on terrorism and not on climate change. And when they they on the Republican side do get around to worrying about the future, they are worried about jellyfish that walk and talk like men. And I am worried about our future as a nation. This is Richard R.J. Escal, and this is The Zero Hour.